Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. Today, we are going to extract records in a table with consecutive numbers. What do I mean by that? Let's look at this data set. I have a stock portfolio here at specific dates. You can see for the last four months. I want to extract any holding or number of shares I haven't changed for a consecutive period. So example, if I look at Bank of America, so from August till to December, I haven't changed my holding amount at all. Wells Fargo, between November and December, I kept my holding exactly the same. So how do I extract all of these consecutive numbers for stock and holding dates from this data table? Well, let me show you how to do it. All right, first thing, bullet into Power Query. Select your table, go to data, from table and range. This holding data, I don't want to make a date time, so you can see it add a change type there. You can just, under the leader, or just go into change that time to date. I can see it's date, it sends this should be an integer and that's an integer and that is a text. All right, just give it a name there, holdings. So now that you have the data in a, in a format that you need, you wanna obviously group it. So we're gonna go use group by. We're gonna use advanced group by because we wanna kinda group it by the stock code, yeah. And we wanna group it by the actual shares, the number of shares. So shares. And we want to do a count of the number of records and we want to do uh, all rows. Let's call this uh, record records. Cool. So now what it did is it basically grouped our portfolio by a number of shares. So you can see here for Bank of America, if you look at the table there, so it's five records, they're all consecutive. Fargo, that's not consecutive. You can see we held 100 shares at August and then 100 shares in October. That's not what we want. First thing that we need to do is let's go one step back. First, you need to sort your data set. So let's sort the data set by holding date first. All right, so insert that step just before we do the grouping. But I also want to do the grouping by the stock. So I'm just going to take, if we go to the editor over here, you can just basically say there, cool. Open a new curly bracket. And just, we want to do it by the column called stock as well. And we say order descending. So, okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you now is at the group step, the group row step, just to open that up. There's actually a hidden perimeter in this. You can do like a table.group. There's a perimeter there called optional group kind. So we're gonna, we're gonna use that one. So I just want you to note, if you look at this, you have this little gear there because you can see the group by user interface. But the moment where you add this, Let's say there, kind global. See that little gear disappears, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna select group kind local. All right, the moment where you do that, you can see we added a row there. Now it's only keeping the consecutive numbers. So if we look at this one over there, you can see this is consecutive. That's all consecutive. That's consecutive. And that's consecutive. So now it only shows the consecutive ones. So now if I only want to see those records, I can say count where the count is greater than one. Now I have all my consecutive records, just hit expand on that, say okay. And I'm just gonna remove all the other columns. So now we have all our consecutive records. Bring it back to, yeah, we're gonna say existing sheet. We just put it in there. There's all your consecutive stocks. All right, but let's say for instance, I wanna apply a threshold here. I don't see the consecutive amounts the last five, only stocks with the last five consecutive amounts. How will I do that? So we are gonna declare a threshold. He's gonna create a new cell there, threshold. And I'm gonna say anything above three consecutive numbers. So what you can do is you can select these two and control shift F3. And it will actually use this left column as the naming convention for uh, this value. So you say, okay. So now you can see if I click there, it named this range threshold. So I can click on there, go to data, now that it has a name, and say from range or table. Cool, I'm just gonna call that threshold. Let's take that step away. <laughs> All right, so we can add a step there. And we say curly brackets, zero. All right, so now it's converting it to a record. But what I wanna do is, I just wanna inside of a square bracket, add column one, of that record, and we say cool. It just brought back the, the value, which is three, and you can see it's a number value. So all I can do now is I open my holdings query over here, and I say 
see this faulted row step over there. I'm just going to enter there the name of that query, threshold. Cool. Say OK. We return that. This one is going to be returned as a connection only. See, so anything above three, so only three consecutive records. You can see that's only the Bank of America stock. So if I want to look at anything bigger than one, only so basically two or more consecutive numbers. I just play refresh and there we go. There they all are. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight of how you can use this creatively in Power Query. This is me, James, your BA Sensei, signing out.